Hey guys, welcome and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be painting and sketching as always, but first I'm going to be setting up my new artist table, which has been one of my dreams as an artist. It is a drafting table from IKEA and I've been eyeing it for a while now and I was drawn to the beautiful aesthetics number one, of course, <laughs> as well as having the freedom to adjust the height and tilt of the table so you can draw standing up or sitting down as well as at multiple angles. So drawing and painting will definitely be easier with this table and more enjoyable as well for my back. I've heard so many people I know talking about backache and I think buying a table that suits you is a great investment. So I wanted to show you the process of setting up this table because it was harder than I thought. Doable, but it does involve some hard work. And these days we see a lot of stuff on social media and usually it tends to just be the completed result because social media is all about the highlights, right? And a few of you have even commented that I make painting look easy in my videos. Well, I just wanted to say that don't let that fool you because a lot of hard work and time is involved in creating and achieving these things. And I'm really glad that there is a platform here on YouTube where we can all appreciate the process and not just the result. So I found this photo on Unsplash of a cafe in Paris called La Mela Bar. I hope I pronounced it correctly. And it looked really warm and inviting. So this is the photo right here. And it felt really nostalgic to me. So I decided to paint it at a side angle and you can find all the angles that you need as reference on Google and Unsplash also has lots of free to use pictures so I'm not using one photo for this painting but I'm actually referencing multiple photos and multiple angles and I'm using one of the photos um, as a reference for the angle and maybe another one for the color scheme that I like. As you can see, I'm mixing all the colors out first and this is a very colorful storefront. So I'm mixing five colors for the base and I basically just use these five colors to complete the whole piece. So I recommend swatching out the colors and to see if they work well together. And I thought the green looked out of place, so I actually added a little re light red to make it slightly warmer. And now I, as usual, if you've been watching my videos, um, I, I like to do this thing where I wet the whole piece of paper in the center, and then I go in with the watercolors and make the base layer. So when you do this, um, remember that the water should be um, it should wet the surface completely, but it shouldn't be like a huge puddle of water unless you want the paint to flow like everywhere. So um, watercolors and the water and the paint, it kind of has a mind of its own. So trying to control that is, um, is not easy, especially if you're a beginner. So what I recommend is don't put too much water at first and um, try not to turn on the fan because it does dry quite quite fast. So this is a piece of paper, um, a 300 GSM, 25% um, cellulose paper and it dries quite fast, especially in um, my home country where it's very hot all the time. So as you can see, I started out with a darker color on the top simply because it is a structure that will quickly define the angle and width 
of the whole cafe. But since it is darker, you, you have to be careful not to cover areas where the flowers and leaves will be. So you have to kind of plan ahead with watercolors um, because these lighter colors won't be able to layer over the darker blue shade. So if you paint the blue on the place where there should be like flowers, the flowers won't look very red. They will look kind of dull looking. So do keep that in mind as well as um, remember to leave some white so that you know that area is like your highlight and you can always adjust that later but adjusting a darker layer um, that you did too early on is harder so try to be careful when you use a darker color Even though I'm using 300 GSM, the paper does wrinkle up when it is wet like this, but it does flatten by itself when it becomes completely dry. So now it's still a little bit wrinkled, but it is already dry and I'm not worried that um, using ink on it will cause the ink to run or anything. So, um, but don't worry if you're using the same kind of paper, most of the time, it will flatten by itself. So right now, I'm doing the outlines with waterproof fountain pen ink, and it's called Noodler's Ink. In this case, there are a lot, a ton of types of ink, inks that you can use. And uh, I, I always link the products that I use in this description if I can find them so if you want you can check it out in the description so I'd like to go straight in when I'm doing these types of drawings but if you're not familiar with these kinds of structures and shapes you can try doing light outlines first with watercolor pencils before using the ink or you can do this whole process in reverse thereby using pencil to, to sketch the outlines then using pen and then adding the watercolor after you've done the outlines so when i'm doing something that i'm not so familiar with such as um, drawing human poses that i've never drawn before that's something that's quite easy to get wrong for me so i usually will outline with pencil before I use pen. So if you're not comfortable using pen, you can always use pencil first. Um, if you want to practice with pen and you want to do freehand stuff, just, just try it. But do keep in mind that if it's the first time you're doing it, it might not come out the way you think it should. So yeah, so do so those are a few ways that I draw and it's not just this type of technique. So as you can see, now I'm painting the second layer of watercolor over the dried ink. So this second layer is more saturated and it defines all the shapes even more. And um, in the case of the bushes, I am leaving the base layer um, untouched in some areas so that it becomes a highlight. So it's the, it's the leaves that are uh, in the sunlight which are brighter and I'm progressively adding darker and darker shadows so that it gives the painting more depth. I think they replace these dried flowers and greens on the awning or they, they trim it very often so every picture that I see is a bit different and I loved that they work so hard to make it look like that because real plants are not easy to maintain 
they go wild so easily, and a little bit of wild is fine, but being unkept is like, you know, not not something that we want. But I I really respect and admire people who work so hard. I mean, these days we tend to a lot of people tend to discount working hard, and I'm not sure if it's because.、Um, We've been taught taught this notion of、um, working working smart but not working hard.、Um, we should. It's like it's a bad thing to work hard. I mean, how is that a bad thing? What I think should be、um, what we teach our kids is、um, work hard. But remember to also work smart. You have to do both if you want to、um, achieve a greater result. If you only work hard but you're not thinking and you're not thinking out of the box, then maybe you're doing things、uh, that sh- that should be easy, but you're making it hard. But if you only have smarts and you don't work hard, like That is just. I mean, I don't think we should be teaching children that working hard is a quality that we should respect. And I really admire people who work hard. So, okay, I'm going to stop my ranting now. <laughs> so basically, what I'm doing here is just adding layers and shadows. Whilst I'm referencing the photos, so I basically use only one color, which is ultramarine deep plus burnt sienna, for most of the shadows, especially the darkest shadows. Coming back to the topic of social media, these days I think many people, including me, tend to get a lot of comparison anxiety from social media. Especially if we see others achieving or having more than us, like we feel bad that we aren't at the same milestones as our peers, or we don't have as much as other people. And I think it's very hard as humans to not compare ourselves to others. However, I think it's always good to keep in mind that every one of us starts out differently. With different circumstances in life, so we shouldn't compare ourselves to others, but instead to our own past selves. So, if I am better than I was yesterday or last year, I have already succeeded. So, I used to love looking at old posts of artists with a lot of followers on like Instagram. And just seeing their progression over the years is super inspirational for me. And they started somewhere. We all start somewhere and progress at our own paces. I hope you found this video helpful to you. If you did, please do give a like, comment, and subscribe because I really appreciate. Every one of you here, I can't believe the the amount of positive people that are on YouTube. I thank you guys for being here, and thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.